this series of videos contains five videos. <clears throat> in the first video we looked at half times, in the second video we looked at compartments, and in the third video we looked at m values. In this video we are going to look at the reason for the WXYZ rule, which is all to do with surface interval credit. Surface interval credit is a question you can almost guarantee you will get at least one if not two questions on in the PADI exams and if you want to watch these videos in series and all find them laid out easily you can go to my website goprocaribbean.com slash deco theory in the fifth video I'll look at navy tables versus the RDP and please remember if you want to help me uh, you can post a link to my website goprocaribbean.com on your blog on your website wherever someone might find these videos useful I don't monetize these videos because I don't want them to adverts to interrupt your viewing uh, so thank me for that why not post a link somewhere to help improve my website's SEO now we need to consider the release of gas nitrogen washes out of your body the same way it washes in therefore when we ascend the nitrogen washes out fast and decreases its rate of release the longer we are on the surface. This is the EE -E washout theory, exponential uptake, exponential release. So let's now watch what might happen to five different compartments on a surface interval. So now we are imagining that we have just surfaced from a dive to 100 feet and very foolishly we allowed all five of these compartments to become completely saturated they were in equilibrium so our 120 minute compartment had 100 feet of seawater nitrogen loading in it we would of course be horribly bent if we had allowed this to happen but for the purpose of seeing how the nitrogen leaves your body on a surface interval uh, watching gas wash out it makes a certain amount of sense so after 10 minutes that 10 minute compartment was already down to only 50 feet of seawater nitrogen loading from its starting point of 100 feet of seawater nitrogen loading. After 30 minutes, the 30 minute compartment is down to 50 feet of seawater nitrogen loading from its starting point of 100 feet of seawater nitrogen loading. And we're coming up on 60 minutes. After 60 minutes, our 10 minute compartment has no nitrogen in it. It's back to zero feet of seawater nitrogen loading. It's back in equilibrium at the surface. Now as we approach 90 minutes on the surface you realize that the the faster tissues that are still off gassing are fairly close to zero feet of seawater so they're off gassing very very slowly. Uh, and the ones that have still got a fair way to go are the slower tissues. Uh, so they're off-gassing slowly, given that they are slow tissues. Let's watch this again, but in a more realistic context. So let's watch what might happen when we surface from a dive to 100 feet, where we actually did pay attention to our NDLs and we surfaced once our first compartment hit its NDL. So using the chart that we've already seen of a dive to 100 feet with five compartments and the M values the same as before, I've sped up the rate at which uh, we are hitting our M values and if you remember the 10 minute compartment hit its M value after 20 minutes on a dive to 100 feet. So now Let's put in some marks to show what the nitrogen loading was on each compartment at the 20 minute mark when we decided we needed to surface. And now let's watch the off gassing happen. After 10 minutes, one half time for the 10 minute compartment. That 10 minute compartment is losing the nitrogen as quickly as it gained it. So we're now getting close to 60 minutes and that 10 minute compartment is almost down to zero feet of seawater nitrogen loading. It's done six half times. It would be back in equilibrium at zero feet. 
However, the other compartments would still have a little way to go before they were back on uh, zero feet of seawater nitrogen loading. But you can see how much the different compartments have dropped from the amount of nitrogen they had in them at the start of the dive to the amount of nitrogen they now have in them after a 60 minute surface interval. Let's look at the 40 feet chart again, putting in the M values. Of course, you'll remember that the M values are off the scale of this chart for the 10 and 30 minute compartments. We're going to have them fill very, very quickly because you've already seen these compartments filling on a 40 foot dive before. Don't want to bore you with it. And if you remember the 60 minute compartment hit its M value after 60 minutes. So I'm now going to add in some markers to remind us where the nitrogen loadings were at the time we decided to end the dive and surface. And I also just want to take note of those nitrogen loadings as we've learned that the rate at which a tissue compartment will absorb and release gas is its half time. But also the bigger the difference between the surrounding pressure and the pressure it's at, the faster it's going to move as well. So we are naturally going to expect that 10 minute compartment, which has a 40 feet of seawater nitrogen difference, to move a lot faster than the 120 minute compartment, which only has a 20 feet of seawater nitrogen difference. And then when you add in the fact that the 10 minute compartment is a lot faster than the 120 minute compartment, there are two different reasons why we are going to see a significant difference in the speed at which we see the nitrogen levels reducing in the body. So at 10 minutes, it's dropped to half that 10 minute compartment. So the fast compartments, the speed at which the nitrogen is leaving the body is very, very significant. You can really see the difference in the speed of those lines moving. And this is very, very important to understand. We're just approaching 60 minutes and that 10 minute compartment would therefore have done six half times and all the nitrogen it absorbed on that dive, it would now have released. You see that these compartments, these slower compartments, uh, the, the gas is leaving them slower and slower uh, the closer they get to equilibrium as it always does. So this is important to understand because it starts explaining the effect that repetitive diving may have and that is obviously why we need to calculate the way nitrogen leaves our body it is in case we wish to do a repetitive dive we need to know what residual nitrogen we have in our body from the previous dive and what we're now seeing having watched these compartments empty is that those slower compartments uh, that were allowed to absorb quite a lot of gas because we did a a shallow dive, a dive to only 40 feet, got even the slow compartments quite close to their M values. So they had a long way to go to drop the nitrogen out of the system. And as a result, after a two hour surface interval, we have compartments that still have a significant amount of nitrogen in them. That means that the slower compartments on a repetitive dive may become the controlling compartments. They may be the ones that reach their M value the quickest on a repetitive dive. So perhaps if we were to do another dive to 40 feet, uh, it would actually be the 90 or 120 minute compartment that was the controlling compartment, even though on a first dive of the day, the 60 minute compartment was the controlling compartment. The 60 minute surface interval credit. You're definitely going to see something about this on your RDP exam. So what are we actually talking about? Well, the PADI RDP surface interval credit table was designed using a 60 minute gas washout tissue compartment. These are all words, uh, different ways to describe the gas washout calculations in the RDP that you may see appear in the exam. What does it actually mean? It means that all 14 compartments in the model are assumed to release nitrogen at a half time of 60 minutes. So we know that there are 14 different compartments in the RDP and each of those compartments has a different half time when it comes to calculating how quickly they absorb nitrogen. 
But what this is saying is that they all have the same half time when it comes to calculating the release of nitrogen during a surface interval. And the half time that is used is a 60 minute half time. So let's now watch the nitrogen leaving our body after a 100 foot dive where we did actually follow our NDL. So we've now got our 100 foot dive loaded. The 10 minute compartment was the first to reach its M value and end the dive. And these were the nitrogen loadings that we would have had at the time we decided to surface. Let's now watch the nitrogen leaving the different compartments using a 60 minute gas washout half time for every single compartment. And I'm sure you are already noticing a huge change. That 10 minute compartment over on the left is losing nitrogen at a fraction of the speed it was losing nitrogen when we were looking at it with the EE washout theory. As we are approaching 60 minutes, we know that after 60 minutes, that 10 minute compartment had zero feet of seawater of nitrogen in it. Uh, but on this model, using a 60 minute washout, after 60 minutes, it's only done one half time. It would have only gone halfway from the 75 feet of seawater nitrogen loading it had at the time of surfacing to zero. And you can see that that's actually about accurate. There's about 37.5 feet of seawater nitrogen loading in it. In order to really see these differences, we need to put the two different charts, two different columns on the same chart. So now we are comparing what EE washout would look like compared to 60 minute washout for each different compartment after a dive to 100 feet where our 10 minute compartment reached its NDL uh, at a 70 foot seawater nitrogen loading and we've got the markings in for the different nitrogen loadings of the other compartments at the moment we decided to surface and start a surface interval. So as the surface interval starts, let's see how the two different gas washout models compare. And you see a very significant difference. The faster the compartment is, the more nitrogen the RDP using 60 minute gas washout assumes there actually is than what is actually in the body but over on the right of the screen the slower compartments what's actually happening is that the 60 minute gas washout calculation that the RDP does is actually underestimating the amount of nitrogen that is in the body compared to what would actually be there using exponential washout that difference becomes even more noticeable when we imagine a the 40 foot dive so that 40 foot dive let's just scroll past the nitrogen loading and know that at the end of this 40 foot dive at the time we decided to surface and start our surface interval the nitrogen loadings were looking like this um, now let's watch the nitrogen leaving our body using a 60 minute gas washout calculation this is the way the nitrogen is leaving your body according to the way the RDP calculates it and you see that it is underestimating the amount of nitrogen that is leaving the body on the fast compartments but is actually overestimating the amount of nitrogen that is leaving the body on the slower compartments, the compartments that are actually slower than 60 minutes. We can see that even after 90 minutes, there's still a significant amount of nitrogen in that 10 minute compartment, when we know that in fact, after 90 minutes, the 10 minute compartment would have zero feet of seawater nitrogen still in it. So as we did with the 
100 foot dive it's easiest to understand it when we put the two graphs side by side so let's compare EE washout with 60 minute service interval credit after a dive to 40 feet and we are really noticing the overestimation of nitrogen in the 10 minute compartment uh, after a surface interval and we are also noticing over on the right of the screen that the RDP, the 60 minute washout credit is significantly underestimating the amount of nitrogen that is actually in your body of course as we would expect the 60 minute compartment the EE washout and the 60 minute washout are absolutely identical so let's see what we have here what we can see here is that EE washout versus 60 minute washout for the 10 and 30 minute compartments the 60 minute washout believes there is more nitrogen left in your body than the EE washout calculates the 60 minute compartment is the same but more importantly for the 90 minute compartment and the 120 minute compartment EE washout versus 60 minute washout the 60 minute washout actually thinks there is less nitrogen in your body at the end of this two hour surface interval than there really is and that is why we have the WXYZ rule on long shallow dives the RDP may underestimate the nitrogen levels in the slow compartments after a surface interval the WXYZ rule enforces a longer surface interval to ensure that you do not exceed the M value of a slow tissue on a repetitive dive. As you hopefully know, the WXYZ rule is that if you end in pressure group W or X, you should do a minimum surface interval of 60 minutes. If you end in pressure group Y or Z, you should do a surface interval of at least three hours and when we actually look at the RDP you will realize that in order to get into pressure group W X Y or Z you would have to have done a fairly long fairly shallow dive at least to get in pressure group Y or Z you would have had to have done a, a really quite long uh, dive uh, to 40 foot or less um, and we see from those charts that it would be in those situations that the 60 minute gas washout uh, that the RDP assumes may actually underestimate the amount of nitrogen left in your body after a reasonably short surface interval. So you now understand half times, you understand compartments and you understand M values. Uh, you also understand gas washout and the reason for the WXYZ rule. In the fourth and final video of the series, I'm going to be explaining the differences between Navy tables and the RDP.